I am not currently in a position to actually watch any videos, but I can still check my emails and I can still check the front page every now and again to see what's going on. And I saw a number of interesting videos, I've ticked watch later on all of them, I'll soon be able to catch up on them. But one interesting one was the video that was posted by Andy and Akantavad. And it's interesting simply because of the title, Why I am not an anti-antinatalist. And I'm looking forward to watching that one. It'll be interesting to see what his reasons are for not calling himself an anti-antinatalist. But um, it, may, it got me thinking about my own position, and I have to agree, at least in the sense that um, I am certainly not calling myself an anti-antinatalist either. Though I suspect that my reasons for doing this are probably going to be very different from Andy's, but... Uh, I'll find that out soon enough, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, my reasons then for not calling myself an anti-antinatalist are fairly simple indeed. First of all, I observe that antinatalism itself is a uh, pretend philosophical position that is based itself on the creation of an artificial dichotomy that I do not acknowledge as being real. Now, first of all, I have uh, issues with dichotomies at the best of time, but uh, in any case, I would ask anybody listening to this to consider what do you think would be an actual natalist? And what sort of positions should that entail for somebody to even consider validly putting themselves in opposition to such a position. So if anybody is out there who would actually identify as a natalist and has a proper definition of what that term would even be, so that the dichotomy can even be created, I'd love to know. That in itself should be enough to reject antinatalism as the nonsense that it actually is, and rejecting something is not the same as being opposed to it. In order to be opposed to anything, you would have to have considered the position. The position itself should at least constitute, constitute something recognizable and arguable, and then you should be able to then place yourself in opposition to it. I reject any such notions about antinatalism. That is not to say that I wouldn't be sympathetic to the concerns that are often raised by people that call themselves antinatalists, and that I wouldn't even agree with a number of the problems that they claim exist in reality. I would say, I would agree that, for example, suffering is a problem within reality and something that might need to be addressed. But in my position, for example, I would argue that if suffering is a problem, then the suffering of whoever it is that is experiencing the suffering needs to be addressed. The existence of that something is never going to be in question. So this then brings me down to my main reason why I could never consider myself to be an anti antinatalist, and that is simply the observation that their rationale, their line of reasoning that leads them from their original premises and their original concerns to their grand conclusions and their proposed solutions to all these problems that they are identifying, that that line of reasoning is itself simply fallacious and logically incoherent. As such, antinatalism, even if we ignore the fact that it is based on this false dichotomy with something called natalism, if we just put that to the side, even then we have to conclude that antinatalism is simply not a valid position to hold. It is not a position that is in any way coherent or logically uh, defensible in any way. And if antinatalism then therefore isn't actually a position that anybody could validly hold, then there is simply nothing there to oppose. Antinatalism, as far as I'm concerned, is a whole big load of nothing. 
and there's therefore nothing there to oppose.